you know, they belong to, you know, the collective or the state. You've got to understand, folks, they, they mean business. They mean to forcibly inoculate you and your family. They mean to force you to eat GMO. They mean to open our borders up and raise our taxes and track everything we do with all smart this, smart that. But if we turn against this as a civilization and as a culture, it's game over for the new world order. Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com are the front lines of fighting these hardcore tyrants who set themselves up and say, we want equality. We want to be nice to you. We want to do as we say. And then as soon as they get their police state in place, they go, take over, revolution. Get rid of the police, you know, world government. Get rid of men. Get rid of father and mother. Get rid of brown bags. Do what we say. We're in control. And it just keeps doubling and tripling down, and people say it's over the top. But this is the point. It's the Overton window where they move it so far towards insanity that it just changes our whole perspective. And folks tend to give the lie so big to just submit to it. That's why we got to be hardcore and point out how sick they are to pull it back and get through this learned helplessness or the mass Stockholm syndrome, the term I've coined. Stockholm syndrome, of course, was discovered back in the was it the '60s, where a lady was kidnapped and they ended up serving the kidnappers. But it, it's it's been around forever. That's just a clinical term for it, where people tend to adapt to their captors. And women are wonderful, resilient, smart creatures, but they're designed more than men to adapt into oppression. That's what slave boats coming in from West Africa or with the Romans when they'd bring in slaves out of Germany. The handbooks have been written. So they would always just kill all the men, the old, men 13 and older. Generally, the Romans would kill them. Um, the Jews considered you to be a man when you were 13 as well. So the Romans did as well. In the old world, it was 13, not just, not just in Israel. And they'd kill everybody 13 and up. That's why you always hear about Pharaoh says kill all the male child. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, the state is a bunch of powerful men. Pharaoh's a man, but he understands that it's a bunch of young men that are his problem. And that's why they're flooding Europe with mainly 90% combat age, military age men, is these will be the leftist jihad force with the left uh, getting in with radical Islam to bring down the West. This is the ultimate false flag. Back to David Knight, InfoWars Sunday broadcast. We'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for Central Standard Time with the weekday broadcast. And then coming up. Wednesday, we kick off the 28-hour broadcast, Wednesday through Thursday. It's going to be amazing. Most of it's live. We're airing three different documentaries we've put together, one with Larry Nichols, another inside the Vatican, and another that's a surprise. Uh, so this is a big 28-hour broadcast coming up. Find out more at Infowars.com forward slash money bomb or Infowars.com forward slash show. And you are the folks that make this entire transmission possible. Infowarslife.com as well. Take advantage of some of the specials there and know your funding the very tip of the spear thank you i salute you and again as alex has just pointed out the plans to take down the family is nothing new it's nothing new and unique to feminism that's something that architects of authoritarian societies have always proposed going back to plato's republic taking a look at huxley's brave new world they always need to destroy the family you need to protect your family you need to protect your health and, of course, this hour of the Alex Jones Show has been brought to you by the products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. One of those that's now back in stock is Brain Force. Unlike some energy drinks and supplements that just rely on caffeine, Brain Force uses natural brain activation with ingredients like Yerba Mate extract and Alpha GPC. Get it while it's in stock. You can find it at InfoWarsLife.com while supplies last. Give your brain nutrition, not just stimulation. We'll be right back. This segment I want to talk about something we touched on a little bit earlier. Liberty versus licensing. You know, when they give you a license, when they give you a privilege, they can take that away at any time. They can control everything that you do. They deny that you have certain inalienable rights, whether it's moving about freely in the country or whether it's engaging in a, in a business. I always thought it was interesting when I had a business that I had to buy a privilege license. Every, every kind of business has to get a privilege license. And I, I said to my wife, you know, it's interesting. Having a business and working is a privilege, but collecting welfare is a right. Doesn't that seem kind of upside down? Here we've got a situation, personal trainers, they say, are sweating as Washington, D.C. readies new rules. When I first saw this from Reuters, I thought, whoa, are they going to, is, is Washington now going to try to license all personal trainers? Well, not just yet. This is something that is just the city of Washington, the district of criminals. They're saying that uh, the capital city is preparing to regulate personal fitness trainers in a move that could ripple through the country's booming 
$24 billion gym industry and its fight against FLAB. You know, that's the key right there. $24 billion. That's a lot of money. And I can guarantee you that the politicians want to get a piece of that action. Yeah, it's just like the mafia. That's the way they operate. And they go through the old streets of New York and they see a guy with a business and they say, oh, you know, you got a great business here. It'd be a shame if anything were to happen to it. Why don't you pay me for some protection money? And of course, they're going to protect you from themselves, okay? That's, that's what they're getting protection from. And so now they're saying that they have to take personal trainers and they have to license them. Look, understand the personal trainer could have you do too much exercise or could have you do an exercise that's inappropriate for you, whatever. Caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. Take a look at this guy's credentials. Get to know them. If, if they're telling you to do stuff that's not comfortable for you, don't do it, whatever. But you could make this argument about anything. You could make this argument about the guy who's mopping the floors, that he needs to have a federal license from the government because he might leave the floor wet and not put up a sign and somebody could fall and uh, become paralyzed. And I'm sure they could get a, a have a congressional hearing where they could parade people before congressmen and say, yes, uh, Sally slipped on the wet floor and she broke her back and now she's living in a life of misery and paralysis. And so we need to license all floor moppers from the federal government. And so this is where this is all headed. But let's look at something else that is going to hit us all much more directly. And that is our ability to move around without the government's permission, without making it a privilege. Now, you may think that it'd be great when you have a self-driving car. We know that the head of Uber has said that eventually everybody's going to be driving around in the cars that he owns. Private ownership, he says, is going to go away once we have autonomous driving cars It'll go away for everybody, of course, except for Uber CEO Travis Kalalnik. Okay, he's going to own all the cars. He'll be the only one with private ownership of cars. And, of course, he'll be operating it in conjunction with the bureaucrats in a kind of fascist economic system. Because that's what it is. Crony capitalism, let's call it what it is. It's fascism, okay? It's economic fascism. They're not waving the flag and doing the kind of stuff that Hitler did. No, economic fascism says that, you know, you've got this... this agreement between the corporations and between government. Uh, they have private property, but only for the privileged. And those people use it in a way that reinforces the power of those who are rulers. That's the kind of crony capitalism that we're going to have in this country. And of course, the, what we're looking at with our transportation system. Now, the Uber CEO was just on uh, the late show with Stephen Colbert. Uh, he just began this this last week, and he's had a very powerful lineup of uh, guests in the last week. I want to play you this clip when Stephen Colbert talked to him about concerns that people had in the competition between licensed taxi drivers and Uber, which doesn't have to get a license from the cities that they operate in. Here's what the Uber CEO said. Uh, taxi driver spends $40,000 a year renting a car. That should be a Bentley that you're riding around in. But instead, it goes to a taxi owner who owns the license to own and operate a cab. In the Uber world, you can use your own car. You don't pay $40,000 to rent a vehicle. You make more dollars per hour, and it's flexible. That is one shift. of the most dishonest you things you'll ever hear from anybody. He, he, he says you have to pay the taxi company. If you're a taxi driver, you've got to pay the taxi company $40,000 to rent that taxi. And, of course, all that money goes to the taxi company. That is a lie, and he knows it. Taxi medallions are something that the taxi companies buy from the local governments. And, of course, it is incredibly regulated. It, it has been a nexus of corruption in most of the states. And that's one of the reasons why you've seen so many people who typically support free markets and, and uh, so siding with Uber. And I think they're wrong to do it. This is not the Jitney taxi situation. Many, many years, many decades ago, we had situations that arose in minority communities. They were called Jitney taxis. And these were dangerous, uh, perceived to be dangerous minority neighborhoods that the regular taxis, the licensed taxis would not go into. And so you had some entrepreneurs, some minority entrepreneurs who said, I'll, I'll provide a taxi service to the people who live in my community. I'm not afraid. I live here. I'll do it. So they created these Jitney taxis. They were not licensed. Okay. They didn't have a big Wall Street backer behind them like Uber, but they were not licensed. They didn't buy these expensive medallions from the city of New York for $40,000 a year. 
they were driven out of business, even though the other companies didn't want to go in there because the government is a protection racket. It wants everybody to operate and buy their licenses from them. And when he talks about a $40,000 license, that is really disingenuous and a lie. Stephen Colbert did not call him on that. That $40,000, I don't know how much the, the taxi license is, but the bulk of that is going to go to the city. And ask yourself, why is the city of New York not charging Uber for those licenses? Time is up because they want Uber to take over all private transportation and set up a control grid. Government has been trying to control our transportation, especially starting in the inner cities, for a very long time. That's what all these uh, boondoggle rail systems are about. They want to control our transportation. This is something that goes back many, many decades. Our interstate system was essentially set up initially so that the military could use it to move about quickly, just as Hitler created the first Autobahn, the, the predecessor to our system, so the military could use it. It's always been about control, maintaining control and making sure that they're in control, but also controlling the population. They use it to enforce a 55-mile-an-hour speed limit. That is nothing compared to what's coming down the pike. When we look at Agenda 21... They want to confine people into small areas inside the cities. This is the United Nations agenda for the 21st century. One of the ways you have to, or you're going to do that is to make sure that people can't easily travel outside of those areas. You're going to make it difficult for them to do that. You're going to make it difficult for people to live in the suburbs. They hate the suburbs. They want to concentrate people because it works to their control. And if they can get a CEO like Uber to be Uber the regulations above the regulations above all transportation to own all private cars. That is precisely what they want. That person then they can deal with. That's somebody that they can control, they can make arrangements with. That will be a way for them to control your transportation. And of course, if they have a highway grid where they're constantly monitoring your cars, uh, seeing how fast you're driving, where you're going. I mean, we know that the government wants to know everything about us. They want to be able to tax us by the mile. There's so many different aspects of this. But we've even seen them selling the idea that Uber's taxis are going to save the planet because somehow they're going to use less carbon dioxide than regular cars do. So the fix is in. And it's kind of interesting because there's also this other side to Uber where you got now an article from WND, kidnappers and perverts are posing as Uber drivers. Because you don't see the marked taxi, people are using their personal cars essentially. How do you know? You call Uber and a guy pulls up, they see somebody who is uh, looking for Uber and they just say, yeah, that's me. And then they get the kids uh, into their car and that's what we've had happen several times. But what's really going on is Uber is posing as a free market solution, and it is nothing of the sort. They're being given, for the time being, a special entry into this market, giving a competitive advantage because they don't have to pay those licensing fees, and you need to ask yourself, why is that happening? Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is our final segment of the show. Now, of course, today is the cusp of a couple of Jewish... Uh, feasts. They have the uh, year of Jubilee is just ending and, and uh, the time celebrating that and we're about to go into another one, the Feast of Trumpets. Of course, the year of Jubilee was a, a great tradition, uh, actually part of the Judaic law that God gave them in the Old Testament. 49 years, every 49 years, they would release people from their indebtedness. Uh, people who were indentured servants, and of course, they called them slaves, but uh, they didn't have the kind of perpetual generational slaves that we have had in the West, that we had in the South uh, prior to um, their emancipation. They would be people who were indentured servants. The people, Many people came to the United States that way as indentured servants, so they have to work that off. But every 49 years, they would be, uh, they would be released. Uh, these people were free. That's why they called it the Year of Jubilee. A lot of people see these biblical prophecies, the Hebrew calendar. We've talked about this repeatedly on the InfoWars show, as well as many econ economic uh, forecasters have uh, seen the cycles that have been repeating with this. This is an article out of the Salt Lake Tribune talking about Mormons who are stocking up. Say some Mormons are stocking up amid fears that doomsday could come this month. They say, of course, they're called preppers. Oh, that's a new term. We haven't heard that before, have we? 
They're buying up food storage kits. They say flashlights, blankets, tents. Some are even bracing to leave their homes if need be. At one of these places where they're selling freeze-dried food, they say sales have shot up 500% or more in the past couple of months. They say there's a sense of urgency. Like something is up. A lot of people are mentioning things about September, like a financial collapse. And we've had multiple economic forecasters uh, predicting that independent of any biblical